Hey, this is Scotch Test Dummies with the Yamazaki 12 Year. It's Japanese. Japanese whiskey and autonomous, autonomous vehicles. vehicles. <laughs> and a bet. Test it. Let's test it. Autonomous vehicles, Bruno. Autonomous vehicles. Did you see the Volvo? Well, I did, yes. Debacle. Well, yeah. Yep. For those that don't know, uh, I, I forget which one we reviewed it on, but we've mentioned in the past, we've got an ongoing bet. The bet is that by 2020, there will be a fully... Which means January or December 31st of 2019... I think at I, midnight. No, I think I get a mulligan because by 2020 means within the year 2020. No, we've already discussed that. All right, well, let's show, let's let's classify what we're talking about here. A fully autonomous vehicle means it drives itself, parks itself. You just get in it and it goes. You tell it where to go. Yeah, you just hey, drive me to work. Boom, yep. takes you for under fifty thousand dollars, which does mean forty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents mm -hmm. by twenty twenty. Yes. As you've heard the twenty twenty things, uh, you know, by twenty twenty. The, that's the exact it's verbiage out. that's the exact verbiage that we've used is that by twenty the year twenty twenty it'd be available, which means to me, mm -hmm. December thirty first 2019 at midnight the car will be available. See I and I it doesn't include the model year. Oh yeah. It's not the model year. Of the I car. think it's the model when you, year. When we car. say it's available by 2020, I don't think so. You guys can leave it in the comments what you think. Right, yeah, because there's that's an inside argument. If it's out by 2020, that's the year 2020. Mm -hmm. If it's a 2020 vehicle release and it's under fifty thousand dollars, I win. So if it comes out December 31st of 2020. No, it's too late. I don't. That's in twenty twenty. That's not by twenty. That's not. We didn't say in twenty twenty. We said by twenty twenty. That's always been the bet. We can go back and watch it, but we did that before. All right. So <laughs> there's been some debacles here. There's been some debacles where the autonomous vehicle ran over. Remember the media made for great Couple. TV. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, it's autonomous. It's kind of. A, I'd say a setback in the autonomous vehicle. Sure, but it's only twenty fifteen. All right, now part of the deal is, is that there are already fully autonomous vehicles with Google, but they require somebody to sit behind it because of a lot of the different laws in different Red states. Yep. All right. So the main question, which I think you're starting to concede, is will it be under fifty thousand dollars? Because uh, well, didn't you think it was going to be like a two hundred thousand dollar vehicle for that or something? I don't know if two hundred thousand, but it'll be closer to a hundred thousand. However, I pointed out to him. Sorry, if I would have said when the first iPhone came out that it would be more powerful than the computer that was on our desks at the time, and it would take better photos than most cameras out there at the time. You would have said that phone will cost eight thousand dollars more, <laughs> more than that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you go back to 1996 when PC computers were starting to come in and everybody was buying them for the home. If we had our iPhones back then in 1996, capable of what they're doing, that would be fifty thousand dollars, right? In and 1996, how much do these cost? Five hundred bucks, bingo. That's what I'm talking about. That's taken about. almost 20 years. Right, but they've been working on so, autonomous cars since about 2000. But they're not, they're working on That's them, That's 20 yes. years. Are they available yet? Yeah, but same with the phones. Yeah. So, and I will say, what's the, uh, what's that driving service that everybody's talking about? Uber? Yes, Uber. Uber is heavily trying to move toward autonomous because the biggest problem they have mm -hmm. is the actual human driver behind the wheel. Yeah because they've had some sexual assault complaints or drunk driving deal or, yeah, I know, but I mean, so if they can get, <laughs> I gotta tell you, if I can sit there and say, send me a car, boom, it shows up, take me, take me to the Scotch bar <laughs> and then bring me home. Mm -hmm. I, I will agree that autonomous vehicles are closer than I originally thought, but I would still say 2025. And the bet is a hundred dollar bottle of Scotch. Yeah. Right. Loser has to buy the other hundred bottle, hundred dollar bottle of scotch. Which right. either way we win because we're gonna share it. That's the nice and part. So speaking about Yamasaki, is this a hundred dollar bottle? This was sixty nine ninety nine. Surprised me. Bingo. The first bottle. Now Yamazaki 
uh, last year one of course I think Yamazaki is well known well respected uh, especially for a Japanese whiskey oldest distillery in Japan and uh, Suntory one of the Suntory holdings right but um, when the, when Yamazaki won awards last year with the sherry cask version um, it became very hard to find in the states I think there was probably a limited supply of it anyway and then once it won the awards it was I, I've never seen it on the shelf until recently just a couple of weeks ago I'm in the liquor store boom one bottle one bottle is on the shelf sixty nine ninety nine which I was surprised by and here we are that's right on the nose um, I get a hint of the actual medicinal alcohol a little bit of the sherry and a touch of vanilla and that's just neat no water's been added sherry yeah I do I get just a little hmm. bit of sherry I mean it's that that little fruity and almost I can almost smell a little bit of that plum raisin I in get, there. see I get a lighter fruit I get a peach actually with it and I get apples hmm. I get that lighter fruit I get uh, the oakiness I get a maltiness Mm, yeah, I can see a little bit on the multi. Mm -hmm. But uh, and the nose on this is really pleasant too. As soon as you, um, you know, you don't even have to have your nose in the glass, and you can pick it up. I'm out, out away from the glass, and I can smell it. Mm. This is delicious, neat. Um, I get um, a chewy plum dipped in granulated sugar. <laughs> he loves my responses because it's there's a plum in there and there's a sweetness. Mm. I get the plum and the sweetness at the same time, and it just feels like literally someone's taken a plum and dipped it right into that granulated sugar, almost even a little bit on an aftertaste of like a prune, which of course is... Is it like Grandpa's Clumpy Brown Sugar? <laughs> I love Grandpa's Clumpy Brown Sugar, but... Uh, um, it's definitely that sherry plumness, but I get that sweetness is where I'm getting the granulated sugar. Um, on the taste, similar to the nose, it's, it's very smooth. Um, I get the oak, I get the malt, I get a slight sweetness, uh, to me a brown yeah. sugar hmm. sweetness, not a granulated sugar. And then just the, the lighter citrus fruits, the pears, the apples, so, uh, the peach. Hmm. I don't get any of that. I get a real, real nice plum or prune with that sweetness. Um, it's very, I mean, it's it's a good whiskey. I, I would say it's an excellent whiskey. Now with the 43%. With a touch of water on the nose, I get a little bit of spice almost and Almost like some coffee, and I usually don't get that, and maybe... That's probably the coffee we were drinking. I don't think so, a little bit of clove. Hmm, hmm. it changes yeah. it a lot for me with the water. I mean, I, I don't get that strong no. alcohol medicinal anymore. This is one that may develop too, if, you, if we mm. let this sit out. So you poured this and let it set for 15 minutes. Um, I think it's Andrew, one of our commenters, yeah. who recommended us doing that in our videos, and, and we could have done that with this one. Right, set set one out while we're testing the other, and then yep. at the end come back and see how it's transitioned or well, changed. Or we will have to try that. Well, we've but, been doing some of that when we're doing our tasting mm -hmm. notes, though. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, both of us are knowing you're. I think you even take longer. I can spend an hour with an ounce, yeah. and so I mean, it's sitting out, and I'm. I'm continually nosing it and, and sipping on it and then making my notes as I go through and just trying to dive in. It's gotten interesting. When we first started drinking scotch, a lot of times it would just be me hanging out at your place and we're watching a good old man movie and drinking some scotch. Right. Die hard or right. And now Terminator. when when I'm over at your place though, if if we're if we're tasting for the show, I can't watch a movie while no. I'm doing it. I like, yeah, I right. like distraction free and yeah. actually we very rarely meet up to do a tasting anymore. Most of the time I'll taste it. I'm at home by myself. It's nighttime. Yes. It's quiet. And yep. then I'll give the bottle to Bart 
and the same for him. He's going to sit at home when it's nice and quiet. I put There's a no little music on actually. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, as long as it's not to me. As long as it's not, I come over and you're playing Mumford and Sons <laughs> at 32 decibels, or not decibels, but levels, and I'm like, yeah, you got to turn that down. <laughs> I like the Mumford. <laughs> the Mumford's good. And I, I, it just plays in the background. I don't think it's that loud. Might be a little loud, but I like to get lost in it. And then I'm all I'm working on is then my nose and my mm -hmm. and my palate. Mm -hmm. So and I love it. But yeah, I have found that out. We actually, I'm trying to schedule time where I'll say, hey, I'm coming over, but let's just grab something we enjoy and watch a movie. Yeah, and not worry about oh. Plum and granulated sugar. Well, and we used to try to get together once a week, and now it's probably once a month that right. we do that, but it's not really to... Well, the bottle sharing instance. we're doing is genius. Yeah. Because I definitely found out, I mean, we're taking... And we and we do taste a little bit different, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean... But some of the times. Yeah. Well, one of the big things that we taste differently on, and maybe this is for another show, I like to nose it pretty quick, get some feeling for it, try it neat, get a touch of water in it, and then try it again so both are fresh, you'll spend a lot longer before you'll switch and add a little water. I, yeah, and I spend longer nosing it. I'm you actually do. gonna spend, yeah. once I pour it, if it's a, if it's my first tasting, I'm gonna spend 15 to 20 minutes just nosing it. You know, I'll set it down and then I'll come back to it again, mm -hmm. nose it and see what I'm getting. Then I'm gonna taste it neat and add my water, you know, and keep going there. And, and uh, try it out because I'll finish that first ounce and then I'll pour another ounce and then now maybe now that I've got some of that aftertaste and now I'm re-nosing it and checking my notes so I like to actually because he's actually been like "Ooh, slow down and I'm, I'm like well no yeah. I I do this boom boom and then I'll do it again and see what I'm you know what is the difference between neat touch of water sometimes I'll even add another thing of water just to see it does it change when I bring it down yeah. but I'm kind of moving through it a little quicker I notice you're a little bit it, you know and it's personal preference sure. but i do believe in the in the distraction free mm. if you really want to try it be in a in a distraction free area whatever if, if you want soft music playing you know play it if you want a movie on in the background have a movie on in the background whatever you do but just where you can concentrate on your whiskey well the zen moment for me is that a lot of people don't i mean when they're drinking an alcoholic beverage they're slugging them down. Yeah. And, you know, to actually, to actually really intellectually think, what is my palate picking up? And, and then, hey, I taste something. What does that remind me of? Takes, you know, a little bit of work. Uh, Malt Mark, thank you for uh, bringing me back on track. Yep. Uh, 87. 87 for me. I really like this. Oh, the 90. Oh, wow. Right. 90 on the Yamazaki 12. Okay, I like it. It doesn't move into the 90s for me, but I really like it. We will review the 18 year Ooh. in the future. So make sure, number one, make sure you subscribe so that you get the notification when we do the 18 year because the 18 year, I think I do move into the nines on the uh, the 18 year. The 12, the 12 year is rare. The 18 year is even rarer. It's very nice. It's got a very interesting, the, the 18 year surprised me. So tune in, make sure please click in, subscribe so that you get our notifications. We put out a America's Whiskey Wednesday, which is just Canadian and American micro distilled whiskeys. I still want to find a Mexican whiskey. And then on Saturdays, we do basically whiskeys from around the world and scotch. Your wife is Puerto Rican. Maybe she could get some. I am worldly. <laughs> I'm multicultural. <laughs> All right. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Salancha. Dummies. Dummies.